Now, on another note, election day in the United States is fast approaching, and the polls are seemingly constantly swinging. So what's in store for the future, and what does it mean for Israel-U.S. relations? Well, joining us to discuss is former Israeli diplomat and expert on Israel-American relations, Nadav Tamir. Nadav, it's an honor to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, so my first question to you is, you know, what, if anything, is going to change the Israel-U.S. ties, um, or, or rather, what would change under a Biden presidency? I think a Biden presidency has a great potential to improve the ties between Israel because the Trump presidency uh, hurt the bilateral relations um, because it made it uh, much less bipartisan. The symbiosis between uh, Netanyahu and Trump, they were focusing on their um, political parties' interests rather than the long-term interests of the countries. And I think Biden can mitigate that. Well, there are those who would argue Quite the opposite, however, that in all the years that Biden has been in politics, he hasn't accomplished as much, at least for Israel, from Israel's point of view, as President Trump has, uh, you know, naming just a couple, recognizing Jerusalem, uh, recognizing the Golan, uh, the attempted peace to prosperity deal, this UAE deal with Bahrain, etc. You know, so, so how would you, what, what would you say to the people who are bringing these, uh, these accomplishments up? I don't see them as an accomplishment, or most of them. I do, think, I do see the UAE and, and Bahrain as accomplishment, even though I think that uh, Netanyahu and Trump would have preferred to do annexation, but they understood that it's impossible, and uh, that was another way to, uh, to avoid it. But uh, the other things that you mentioned did not really help Israel. Uh, the most important things for Israel, long-term interest, are the two-state solution in that sense. Trump took us further. Uh, he became completely irrelevant in terms of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In terms of the Iranian threat, Iran got much closer to a bomb because Trump crushed the international coalition that was there uh, to face Iran. But again, there are many people who are arguing against these points, saying, for example, with the JCPOA nuclear deal with Iran, as Netanyahu has said many, many times, that, that it paved the way for the bomb. Uh, it has sunset clause, it, ha it, it ended, it, it didn't quite address their uh, intentions in the region. There were also, of course, uh, as you mentioned, in terms of the politicization of ties to Israel, there are those who are, would argue that the Democrats uh, politicized it by having you know, certain fringe elements uh, uh, within the party. I'm not uh, aspiring to speak for the masses. I'm speaking for myself and for the way I see the relations. I think that those elements that uh, you mentioned are wrong. I think that uh, uh, going to Washington to speak against an elected president um, made a great damage to the uh, bilateral relations. And I think it actually even worked against the goal because it forced Democrats to support Obama on the deal that Netanyahu didn't like. So I don't see how those um, actions were good for Israel. Uh, and I actually believe that Trump was not a good president for Israel uh, because of many reasons, not just the bilateral ones. Because uh, Trump uh, made America weaker in terms of its international influence, in terms of the leader of the free world. And Israel needs a strong America that can bring the world in terms of global things like uh, climate change or pandemic uh, prevention, but also in terms of uh, facing Iran, Syria, and promoting um, the, the, you know, a, an agreement with the Palestinians, which I don't think Trump really helped to bring about. And to add to that, the fact that we're moving away from um, the majority of the Jewish community that are mostly liberals and mostly vote for Democrats, I think it's not good for Israel. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned that, because that brings me to my next point, which is that when you look at American Jewry, by and large, you're, you're more than correct in that they uh, overwhelmingly support the Democratic Party and have historically for a long time. But here in Israel, new polls are showing that it's quite the opposite, that 70 percent and, and higher of Israelis are much more in favor of Trump continuing on for another four years. Where, where do you get that, that disparity from? Uh, if there are others like you yeah, in Israel I, I who, think, who I think, think uh, right. the, the majority of Israelis are wrong on this. I, I think that... Uh, um, Do you think that they just don't understand American politics? Or, you know, where, where are they listen, getting their... I, their... I, I think they're even wrong about what's good for Israel. And I think that they can't separate between being close to the Israeli prime minister and being close to Israel. It's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. For the long-term um, interest of Israel, 
I don't think this uh, presidency was helpful. Uh, but most people, you know, they feel defensive. They um, like when someone is kind of supporting um, our prime minister. But I think that um, the combination of Netanyahu and Trump is not good for Israel, not good for the Jewish people, and not good for humanity. All right, Nadav Tamil, strong words ahead of the election. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.